Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, part two on that thing right here. Uh, yeah, part two of uh, the Hydro Boost conversion from Vacuum Booster on my first gen Cummins. All right, see what I'm starting off with here. All right, so I need a way to get the um, return from the Hydro Boost to the power steering pump. So what I did was I just sliced the hose Easy peasy like that. So, what I'm gonna do, got son of a. Okay, well, after I get that from the bottom of the truck, like that. Great. Outtake. This is just a simple T, not a Mr. T, but from Earl's Plumbing, 3 8 line. What I'm gonna do is first not be a total douche, put a clamp on there first. Put this guy all the way in there. Nice old hose. Doesn't cooperate. All right, that should be pretty good. Then put another hosey right there. All right, so once I clamp that on there, I'll have a hose coming from the Hydro Boost to there. All righty. Alrighty, so what I'm using for fuel hose is Gates, nice uh, quality Gates, I don't know if you can see that, fuel injection hose, 3H, 225 PSI, green shield, multi-fuel, biofuel, all that stuff. Uh, that's good enough for the return on the uh, Hydro Boost to the, uh, the T that is installed there. So yeah, I'll show you that once it's all completed. Alrighty, so I got the power steering pressure line off and as you can see They have interesting fittings. So what you got to do is Find the correct adapters for them for the AN fittings. So that's what I got. We got the AN-6 and then We have a little o-ring so it seats into the o-ring into a groove in there uh, Flat face you tight tighten it until pretty much it bottoms out and then it'll seal so as you can see they are similar I forget what the thread size is but um, yeah so that is the application for that one and this power and steering always has two sizes so as you can see I have one for this drippity drip so one goes into the power steering and one pump and one goes into whoop, what am I doing god focus you idiot um, one goes into the power steering pump and then the um, other one goes in the power steering gearbox. So, or, you know, the steering gear. I don't know if you guys can see. But yeah. So, let's put the uh, big sucker in there. This guy goes in there like such. You'll have it sticking out like that. So, and the same with the power steering, uh, which is right over there somewhere. All right, so let's see when it's installed and then we can go further. All righty, so I think you guys can see here, let's put the light on the situation here. So there's the adapter fitted into the back of the power steering pump. So now I got to put on the fittings, cut and fit for the size of hoses, and just uh, go from one to the other, I guess. So I guess we'll see how we turn out. Alrighty, so what I did was I put the fitting on there, pointing kind of in the general direction it needs to go. And then I put the other fitting on there like that. I don't know if you guys can see that past the uh, little this little guy, which I'm gonna get the F out of there. Of course it's a little twingly down here, sucker. Yeah, so there you go. So now I'm going to measure between, I don't know if I'm going to go above or below, probably below that return line off the Hydro Boost. So, yeah, we'll see uh, when I have a line cut, and then I'll make the hose. All right. All right, so I measured the hose. I'm going to cut right in the middle of that uh, tape mark there. Hopefully it'll prevent fraying. So uh, we'll see how it goes there, I guess. Let's see if that's... Uh, of course, that's not hooked up proper. So, let's see how much I can butcher this. Alrighty.
of dirt. Next round. All right, so let's see what we got here. So hopefully that uh, will fit in the fitting nice. And uh, next up, I'll make the fitting with the hose. All right. All righty. Yeah, let's get you off of there. Hey. Um, so I got a uh, nice little Earl's vice fixture for these uh, um, fittings here. And what I like to do is, let me get you back on there, get you positioned. All right. So what I like to do is the way these guys go, as you can tell, they screw off. <laughs> Um, they have these uh, things that you push on the end of the hose and once the hose is seated all the way in there Then you fix this in the vise again the other way and then you screw this down onto into the hose So the other thing I like to do is measure the depth That this hose has to go into this fitting so I measure from the end here where it should bottom out to here So I know I'm how close I am to the end here so you pretty much want it in all the way, kind of a deal stuff here and there. So let's see, I want to put a little bit of WDCs in here and then right on the tip of the hose. So right inside and just on the outside. So let's see how easy this goes in. It's been a while since I did one of these. All right, let's see here. Alrighty, so after a little bit of research, you got to reverse thread that on there. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. Let me grab a little flashlight to Reno. But uh, yeah, it's seated nicely in there. So now I'm going to start threading in that other piece and see how that goes. screwing these in there I'm watching this green tape and seeing if it comes out or not so this sucker is uh, doing really good all right I'll show you when uh, it's all done Alrighty, so that is one end done. As you can see, it is fully seated there. And the hose didn't come out. So yeah, it's in there, in like Flynn. So, if you guys wanna see a, another fitting, of course, they're all out and running around and I can't find them right now. So, as you guys can see, let me get this sucker back in there. The hose barb goes in practically sticks into the hose that far and actually protrudes a little bit all right so that's one done out of four and also what you got to make sure is orientation of these suckers so i got to put this one on and then see what the orientation of the other one is all righty all right so the hoses are made the ends are clocked and now this fabric hose will have some spiral wrap. I like spiral wrap for all my hydraulic hoses. And I'll show you when the sucker's on there. And bam. I like to have a little bit of protection because this is running along the frame and the fender where it's nice and sharp. So I want to prevent abrasion and cutting. So yeah, there you go. I didn't need to go all the way because uh, that's by the brake booster. So alrighty, see you under the hood. Got my shop up up here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I did finish up the uh, plumbing of the Hydro Boost there. So I just got uh, the lines running nice and down to the uh, power steering. And then from there to the steering gear, you can see the uh, spiral wrap on the fa fabric line there. But yeah, this uh, hose is actually quite tough. It might look like fabric line with a goodie drawer. But as you can see, there's nice steel braids in there. Of course, this camera doesn't focus. 
All right, next steps is to bleed the master cylinder before I put it on. There are several different ways of doing this. So this is bench bleeding. So I will, uh, once I figure it out, I'll show you the process. All right, let's see one way I like to break bleed things. So I got nickel copper or NICOP brake line with the appropriate fittings here. These are just for bleeding. So I can change out these, uh, these nuts to different thread sizes for different uh, master cylinders. Uh, I got just a whole big kit. Uh, the flare on the end stays the same. This is super easy to bend, but it's still rated for brake pressure. So yeah, what I like to do is slowly with a bolt of some kind, you know, I like to have a nice big bolt so it's not so heavy on the palm of my hand. Push nice and slow, nice and slow. And then you do that slowly for a bunch of times until some of the air is bled out. I mean, all the air will never be bled out until you really bleed. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse brake bleed from the calipers up because the system wasn't opened at the caliper side or any of the brake line side. So it's just by the master cylinder side. So I'm gonna try to pump the air all the way back through up. So we'll see how that works. And uh, yeah, follow along with progress. All right, here's one method that I like to use. It's called a reverse brake bleeder. It's got a reservoir here that is like a syringe, actually. And it comes out of a fresh, clean reservoir there of brake fluid. So it comes up through the hose into the back of the brake bleeder and then forcefully gets pushed in through the brake line. So you can mess around. I mean, air bubbles always end up at the top. So you got you know, you got to take everything with uh, that into account. But uh, you can reverse brake bleed, you can forward brake bleed, you can do whatever you want just to get the air out of the, you know, the crevices in there. So I like to go slowly in reverse bleed here so, you know, you don't fold over any seals. But you have to be careful because the fluid does tend to come up when that gets empty. So just keep that in mind and that's how I'm going to go about this and we'll see uh, how it bleeds otherwise. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna go try this and see if we can see some air bubbles coming in through here. Oh yeah, there's a lot of air bubbles when you back bleed or reverse bleed. Oh, there we go, we got fresh fluid, no bubbles. All right, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and this is, let me get the brand of this whole thing. This is Phoenix Systems, Phoenix Injector. I, I guess this is the, the, there's a couple of different models, but I just got the, the other one, the better one, whatever, the more, the more money one. All right, cool. Alrighty, so the master cylinder is installed. Now I just got to remove the brake lines and put the, uh, or the bleeder lines and then put the brake lines on. And we'll go from there. Alrighty, so I got the uh, lines swapped over, but as you can see, I had to swap over that fitting. It was uh, a bigger one than that. These two are the same, but uh, yeah, so I had to cut a little bit of that uh, line off and reflare it in place, which is a big pain in the butt. -o. But yeah, now I can uh, get ready to reverse bleed uh, the brakes out. Hopefully, that'll work really good. We'll see. So there you go. All right, I'm gonna have a second hand for that and we'll see how it goes. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. So we are just about wrapped up here. We already test ran it and made sure there was no leaks. We uh, filled up this guy, probably way over full. We'll get there when we get there. But uh, yeah, so next thing is a test drive. So. Let's see if we can get one of those without blowing something up. Alrighty.
right, well, as you guys have seen, test drive went a-okay. I'm gonna check for other leaks. There might be a little bit of wetness right here, but I doubt it. So I'm looking for other leaks. We'll just let this sucker cool off and see what we see. All right, well, I think, as you saw, the sucker stopped really good, even without a proportioning valve for the back. I think the stock uh, factory setup works really good. So yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, part two. And as always, don't mind the hair, like and subscribe. Aloha.